Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know God loves you too much to leave you the way that you are? <laughs> Amen. So turn to somebody and say, you're changing. And say, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I believe God has some wonderful things on his agenda for you and I. Mm. Jeg tror Gud har noe spesielt på sin agenda for deg. Scripture says when we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Når vi har ører å høre sånn at vi kan høre hva ånden sier. That's when we become a part of the overcoming church. Det er da vi blir en del av den seirende menighet. How many want to be a part of the overcoming church? Vil du være en del av den seirende menighet? All right, just lift up your hands and let me pray for you. Bare løft opp hendene så skal jeg be for dere. Father, I'm praying that we will have ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us. Bare ber om at vi skal ha ører som høres så vi kan høre hva du sier til oss. We're asking you to open our eyes and open our hearts. Vi ber om at vi åpner våre øyne og åpner våre hjerter. Let your word penetrate deep inside of us. La ditt ord bare gjennomtrenge hele oss på dypet. Past any walls of pride. Gå forbi murer av stolthet. Or any hidden places of shame. Eller noen skjulte steder av skam. Right in to the depth of our heart. Helt inn på dyp av hjertet vårt. That that seed will find root. At den seden vil slå rot. And will bear great fruit. Vil bære mye frukt. That your name would be praised. Sånn at ditt navn vil bli lovprist. So just give the Lord a hand clap of agreement. Hallelujah. Så bare takk Herren. I brought a fan with me in case, you know, I need a, you know, something. We bring fans from America, fans from Norway, everywhere around the world. Vi har brakt med meg sånn vifte her. Vi har hatt med flere steder. Facebook fans, all kinds of things. All slags men tidligere. What's that? May not mean the same thing. Okay. All right. Well, we're excited about today. How many want to cross over? Hvem her vil kryss over? Come on, how many want to cross over? Hvem her vil kryss over? You know, you have to have that in your heart. Du må ha det i hjertet ditt. As a desire to say, God, I want all that you're going to outpour. Jeg vil bare ha, du må bare ha det hjertet ditt. Jeg ønsker en utøsning. And I'm not going to be drawn back, I'm going to press in. Jeg skal ikke holde meg tilbake, men jeg vil presse fremover. So look with me again in Matthew chapter 8. Se på Matteus kapittel 8. We're going to be using this passage a little bit over this conference. Nå skal vi bruke dette bibelstedet en del på konferansen her. And again we find that Jesus begins to speak to his disciples. Og igjen så er det Jesus som snakker til disiplene sine. And in verse 18 it says, When Jesus saw the great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Så når vi leser fra vers 18 i kapittel 8, der står det da Jesus så de store skarene omkring seg, befalte han at de skulle dra over til andre siden. We see that Jesus released a command. Jesus forløste en kommando. And he said you have to cross over to the other side. Du må krysse over til andre siden. If you're going to follow me, you have to cross over. Hvis du skal følge meg, så må du krysse over. So turn to somebody and say, you have to cross over. So snu deg til noen andre og si at du må krysse over. It's a command from Jesus. Det er en kommando fra Jesus. And so he was getting them moving in the right direction. Så han ga dem en bevegelse i riktig retning. And then we talked about the other night in verse 19. Så snakket vi den kvelen her om vers 19. Then a certain scribe came to him and said, Teacher, I'll go wherever you want me to go. En skriftred som kom sa til ham, Mester, jeg vil følge deg over alt hvor du går. And Jesus said back, Really? Ja, virkelig, sa Jesus. Are you sure? Er du sikker på det? Because where I am going is not all prepared already. For da hvor jeg skal gå, så er det ikke helt forberedt. Where I am going, you're going to have to go by faith, walk by faith, and live by faith. For da hvor jeg går, så må du vandre i tro, du må leve i tro. He said, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests in the air, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Revene har huler og himmelens fuler har reder, men menneskesønn har ikke noe sted der han kan hvile hodet sitt. He wasn't saying he was never going to be able to lay down and take a nap or sleep. Det var ikke sånn at han ikke hadde noe sted hvor han kan bare legge seg ned eller sove litt. No, he was saying you're going to continually be journeying. 
Nej, det har nog med det att du har du kommer fortsätta till att resa bära på resa. And so we talked about how in order to follow the Lord to the other side. För det är så att vi ska följa mästaren över på den andra sidan. You have to have a certain heart and mentality inside of you. Så måste ha en speciell hjärta och en mentalitet. And if you will, it's the heart of a pioneer. Och vi ska ha hjärta till en pionjer. A pioneer is always trailblazing, going into new territory. En pionjer är alltid en som går på nya områder. Places where everything has all been prepared for you, but you've got to go by faith. Och steder som inte har förberett på förhand, men var du måste göra det. John the Baptist went and prepared the way of the Lord. Johannes döper och sa förberedd Herrens väg. He made crooked paths straight. Han gjorde krokade vägar rätta. He went into the wilderness and began to decree it's time to make ready for God. Han gick ut i vildmarken och sa att förbered det för Herren. Make a people ready. Gör ett folk reda. That's part of the prophetic call. Det är en del av det profetiska kallet. If you're going to be a prophetic Christian, if you will, hvis du ska vara en profetisk kristen, you're going to have to have that sense of adventure and divine curiosity. Så måste du ha en sån nyfikenhet i dig. Seeking God and saying, God, what do you want to do? What are you saying? Söker Gud och vad du vill. Vad vad säger du? I appreciate all that God's done before. Jag säger allt vad Gud har gjort för. And we build that as a foundation underneath of our feet. Och vi har byggt en grundlag under fötterna våra. But then we say, God, what are you doing today? Så säger vi, Gud, vad vill du göra idag? How do we move ahead and cross over? Hur då ska vi bevega oss framöver och kryssa över? So let's look on in verse uh, 21. Ska vi se på vers 21? And then it said, then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Hon an av disciplerna hans sa då till ham, herre, låt mig först gå bort och begrava min far. Feels like a, a, an honorable request. Ja, det är ett rikt spörsmål akkurat det. I mean, it is one of Jesus' disciples. Ja, det är en av Jesu disipler. And he says, my father's died. I need to go and bury my father. Han säger att faren min han är död. Jag tränger att gå och begrava min far. I mean, the Lord said, honor your father and mother. Det står att vi ska ära vår far och vår mor. So he's just saying, hey, I need to take care of this before I go. Jag sa så att jag tränger att ta hand om det före jag går. But listen to what Jesus said to him. Men lyssna vad Jesus sa till honom. He said, "Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead." Jesus sa, "Följ mig och låt de döda begrava sina döda." Sounds a little harsh. Det hörs lite tufft ut. Really, Jesus, is this what you're going to say to your disciple? Verkligen är det du önskar att säga till disciplerna dina? Jesus was trying to set a principle in the play. Jesus han behöv, han prövade oss att sätta ett principel i funktion. This is what he was trying to say to this disciple. Det är han som säger till disciplen. He's saying it's time to cross over. Han säger att det är på tide att kryssa över. And if you move your eyes and your heart to the past, you're not going to go into your future. Och vi står ännu fästet på fortiden din så kan du inte gå framöver i framtiden. Oh, but my family calls me back. Ja, men min familj kallar mig tillbaka. My obligations call me back. Mina förpliktelser, de kallar mig tillbaka. My traditions call me back. Mina traditioner, de kallar mig tillbaka. All these other things are calling me right now. Alla dessa andra ting de kallar på mig nu. And if I, I got to go there so I can take care of it. Jag måste gå dit så att jag kan ta hand om det. But Jesus was warning him. Men Jesus advarte. If you begin to go back there now, you'll never get free to go forward the way you're called to go. Så kommer aldrig vara fri till att gå in i det du har kallt till att gå. He knew things were going to entangle him back there with all those situations that were dead. För han visste att han måste tackla en del av dessa tingena som kommer att komma. He knew that if he didn't move forward now, he probably wouldn't move at all. Han visste visst inte han kunde bevega sig nå så vill han inte vara stånd till det helt tatt. He said, "Follow me." Han sa, "Följ mig." Let the dead things bury their own dead things. Låt de döda tingen begrava sina egna döda ting. Let the dead bury their own dead is what he said. Låt de döda begrava sina egna döda. In other words, don't go back to that dead situation. Men andra ord, inte gå tillbaka till den döda situationen. Don't go back to that dead religious system. Eller det döda religiösa systemet. If you do, it's liable to engulf you and you'll never move ahead. Jag så kommer du bara att spisa då på du kommer aldrig bort. It feels kind of harsh and almost mean. Du hördes liksom liksom tufft och vemlig ut, slemt ut. Jesus knew exactly what he was saying. Men Jesus visste akkurat vad han sa. When it's time to move, you've got to be willing to step out whatever it costs you. Når du, når du skal gå fremover, så må du gi alt. Det må koste alt. Du må være villig til å gjøre det. We, we have a man in our church that was saved in our prison ministry. 
Det er en mann vi har i menigheten vår som ble frelst gjennom fengselstjenesten vår. His name is uh, David Dorado. Det er David Dorado, heter And han. he's a real kind of burly kind of looking guy. Han er en kraftig kar. And when he comes to church, he just worships with all of his heart. I mean, he shouts, he dances, he doesn't hold back. <laughs> if he's in church, you know it. <laughs> because he knows what he was saved from. For han vet han ble frelst ifra. But his testimony is kind of interesting. Because he and his wife were kind of caught up in the drug culture. For han var en del av den narkotika kulturen. And so violence and drug uh, uh, addiction and all kinds of things was in his lifestyle. Så det var det var vold og narkotika og avhengighet alt dette i livet sitt. So he had in his life been arrested several times. Så han blev arrestert flere ganger. And finally, the last time he got arrested, he ended up with a 30-year sentence on his life. Så han til slut, så var, fikk han 30 år i fengsel. And his wife was home, and she was not doing well at all. Og kona var hjemme, og hadde ikke bra i det hele tatt. She was also caught up in the drug culture, and his, her children were suffering greatly. Og hun var også en del av den narkotikakulturen, og barna hennes led også. Well, one day, uh, a ministry team from Christian International Vision Church showed up at his prison. Og så kom det en dag da noen fra Christian International inn da i fengselet. And they preached, prayed, and prophesied. Og de og de and brought all these books from this guy named uh, Bishop Bill Hammond. <laughs> de fra Bishop Bill Hammond med seg. And in the middle of the ministry, he got radically saved. Under, da, så ble han frelst. And then they began to prophesy ministry and destiny over his life. Så hans over hans liv. And he got all fired up about the call of God. Så han fullt av over Guds kall. And in his mind, he was thinking, the rest of my life is probably going to be in prison. Og så tenkte han at resten av livet mitt må jeg leve i fengsel. But I'm going to do the best with what I have and where I am at. Men jeg skal gjøre det beste ut av det hvor jeg er og hva jeg har. And so he went about doing ministry the best way he knew how. Så han gjorde tjeneste da på den beste måten han kunne gjøre. And he was faithful to attend all the meetings that uh, the team came and did at the prison. Han var trofast og besøkte alle disse møtene som teamet hadde i fengselet. But when, one day uh, one of the guards came up and said you've got to come see the warden now. Så kom en av vaktene til ham og sa at du må komme og besøke han betjenten, fengselbetjenten nå. He said he thought, uh-oh, what have they found out about my life now? Og så lurte jeg bare, uh-oh, hva har de funnet ut om livet mitt nå? Now they're gonna tack on some more years, I guess. Nei, nå skal du legge på litt flere år. But he goes into the warden's office. Og så gir han til, går han til fengselbetjenten. And the warden looks at him. Og så ser han på han. Mr. Dorado. Mr. Dorado. I've got some things to tell you about your case. Jeg har noe å fortelle om saken din. It appears there have been some discrepancies and mistakes in the way you were prosecuted. Det er noen uoverstemmelser over måten du ble anklaget på. So the prosecuting attorneys have decided to dismiss your case. Så du bare skal bare se bort fra den dommen du har fått. So I want you to go back to your cell, get your stuff, you're free. Bare ta tak i cellen din. Come on, in one day's time. Det er fri. In one day's time, he went from basically a life sentence to freedom and back to the streets. Så på en dag så gikk han fra å være litt 30 år eller en livstid i fengsel og ofte bli en fri mann. But let me tell you what he did. Men fortell, skal jeg fortelle hva han gjorde? He thought in his mind, boy, God's really done a miracle in my life. Han fant ut, ja, men Gud har jo virkelig gjort et mirakel i livet mitt. But my family and I, we need to change. Men familien min og meg, vi trenger å forvandle oss. And the truth is, they live about uh, an hour, maybe hour 15 minutes or almost 30 from our church. De bodde da en time, 15, en time og 30 minutter fra menigheten vår. But when they got back, when he got back to his home. Når han kom tilbake til hjemmet sitt. He said, I need to find out where that church is that came and ministered to me. Jeg må finne ut hvor den menigheten er som kom og tjenestgjorde i fengselet for meg. And he said, I'm gonna go to that church. Jeg skal gå til den menigheten. So he travels almost an hour and a half every time we have church. Så han reiser nesten en halvannen time hver gang vi har møte. And he shows up joyfully ministering for the Lord in our house. Og han møter opp full av glede for å tjenestgjøre i menigheten vår. One of his sons is now a worship leader. Og en av sønnene hans er nå, er nå lovsangsleder. Another one of his sons now is our multimedia director. Og en andre sønn er sånn multimedia direktør hos oss i menigheten. His Daughter married a man that's on our worship team. Og, og, og datteren gifte seg med en av de som er med på lovsangsteamet vårt. 
His whole family has been radically changed. Hele familjen er radikalt forvandlet. But he knew that if he went back and made the old connections, Men han visste hvis han dro tilbake nå kom i forbindelse med sine gamle forbindelser and just kind of settled in the comfortable Christianity. Og bare satt seg liksom sånn komfortabel kristendom. The likelihood of him getting pulled back into bad things was high. Og da ville sannsynligheten for at han ville bli trukket tilbake inn i det igjen, den ville være høy. He's saying, I'm going to have to break off some old associations so I can build the new that God wants to do in my life. Jeg må bryte vekk fra de gamle forbindelsene og knytte meg til nye forbindelser. See, if you are facing backwards all the time, it's hard to cross over into the new God has for you. For hvis du har oppmerksomheten rettet bakover, så er det så vanskelig å gå inn i det nye. The truth is, history wants to repeat itself. Sannheten er at historien, den vil... Det vil stadig at det skjer igjen og igjen, det vil gjenta seg. And old patterns want to bring old fruit in your life. Og gamle mønster, det vil komme med de gamle frukten i livet ditt. And you have to choose into breaking through. Og du må velge det å bryte gjennom. In other words, you've got to choose into your destiny. Du må velge din skjebne. You have to choose into your calling. Du må velge å gå inn i kallet ditt. You have to choose in to excellence. Du må velge excellence. You have to choose in to greatness. Du må velge storhet. Turn to somebody and say there's greatness inside of you. Vend deg til noen og si at det er storhet i deg. But you're never going to step into that greatness by living out of the nominal of the old or the minimal of the old. Du kan ikke gå inn i det nye og få bli i det gamle. How many know that the enemy is real good about pointing out your mistakes? Djevelen er veldig flink til å peke ut dine feil. In fact, he's called this the accuser of the brethren. Ja, det står at han er brødrenes anklager. And he says, it doesn't matter if it's day or night, he knows how to accuse the brethren. Om det er dag eller natt, så vet han hvordan han skal anklage brødrene. In fact, the, the power that the enemy has over your life is to project your old identity. So he'll come and whisper in your ear, hey, you know, you know what's wrong with you. <laughs> you know the mistakes you've made. You know that you'll never be any different than your mom or your dad. You know the problems that are in your life. You know how imperfect you are. Du, du vet hvor uperfekt du er. Well, could God ever use an imperfect vessel? Kan Gud virkelig bruke et uperfekt kar? I hope so. Det håper vi virkelig. Because <laughs> that's me and that's you. For det er meg og det er deg. He's, we're all he has. Det er vi alt han har. In fact, you think about the life of David. Vi ser på Davids liv. I mean, David in the New Testament is lauded and praised so greatly. Han er lovprist så mye i skriften. All you hear about is the tabernacle of David, the, the throne of David, the, the lineage of David, the spirit of David, the keys of David. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, David's great. But then there's the Old Testament. And then we find out what David really did. And we find out David was not a perfect man. In fact, David made some big mistakes. I mean, he made some of the worst of the sins. Right? Yeah. Murder is pretty bad. Adultery is pretty bad. Og det er ekteskapsbrudd, er virkelig dårlig. I mean, David put himself in a very perilous position with God and man. David satte seg i en veldig alvorlig situasjon med Herren. But David had a way of always somehow running to God and getting it right. Men David hadde den egenskapen at han løp til Gud sånn at det ble riktig igjen. And somehow he was able to to forget his past and still go on to be a king and to be all that God had called him to be. Og så hadde han en evne til å glemme det som var bak, og kunne bli da både den kongen og personen han var med til å være. He would have never stepped into greatness if he was always thinking about, boy, but I've blown it. Han ville aldri gått inn i den storheten hvis han ville tenke på sine feil, at, å nei, han har ødelagt alt. You think about Peter here, he's called a rock, and he's going to be used to build the church. Peter, han ble jo kalt en klipp hvor han skulle bygge menigheten. And he did powerful miracles. Han gjorde store mirakler, kraftfulle. And yet, if you remember, there's a day that Jesus turned to him. 
Och så var det en dag då Jesus vände sig till ham. Get behind me devil. Gå bak med Satan. Get behind me Satan. Gå gå bak med Satan. Jesus. Oh uh, Jesus. You called me a devil. Du kallade mig djävul. I guess I'm the worst of the worst. Jag är den värsta av de värsta. I don't remember you calling anybody else a devil. Aldrig så jag hörde att du kallade någon så stikt. I thought I was your disciple. Jag trodde att jag var din disippel. And what have you said to me? Och vad har du sagt till mig? <laughs> I'm going to run away and hide the rest of my life. But how many know Peter was still used very powerfully? He would never cross over into God's purposes for his life. Han ville alla krysset in i Guds hänsikt och förs livet sitt. If he would just lived out of that mistake or that problem that he had. Hvis han ville levde ut av den feilen och det problem han hade. I don't know if you've ever studied the the life of Abraham Lincoln. Er det, vet om det er noen her som har studert livet til Abraham Lincoln? But in, in the United States, he's really looked at as one of the, our greatest presidents. Men i USA så har han blitt sett på en som en av våre største presidenter. But if you ever go through the, the kind of tracking of his life, Men hvis du ser tilbake på livet hans, his life was really kind of sad and bad. Så var livet hans virkelig trist og dårlig. Let me just tell you what happened to him. Skal bare fortelle hva som har skjedd med han. It's in 1831. I 1831 he lost his job. Så mistet han jobben sin. In 1832. I 1832. He was defeated when he tried to run uh, for the state legislature in Illinois. Så ble han slått når han skulle stille til valg for Illinois staten. So he tried to run for office and he was defeated. Så han, så han stilte til valg og så ble han slått. The next year in 1833 he I, failed in business. Og i 1833 så gikk det dårlig forretningene. Then in 1834 he got elected to the leg- legislature. Men så i 1834 så ble han valgt til Illinois-staten. Hallelujah. Da ble det suksess. Things finally going my way. Endelig så gikk det bra. The next year his, his girlfriend, his sweetheart died. Og i 18, eh, 1835 så døde kjæresten hans. 1936, the next year, he had a nervous breakdown. Og i 1836 så hadde han en nervøs sammenbrudd. Come on. 38, two years later, ja. he was defeated when he tried to run for Speaker of the House in Illinois. Nå i 1838 så ble han, eh, så ble han slått når han skulle være sånn taler eh, for, eh, i Illinois. So in uh, five, five uh, years tals, later, tals in 1843, yeah. he decided to, to run for U.S. Congress, and he was defeated. Og i 1843 så ble han slått om til nomineringen når det gjelder uh, amerikanske kongressen. Then in 1846, three years later, he runs again for Congress. Og i 1846 så igjen så sto han på valg til kongress. And, and he wins, hallelujah. Så han. But then in 1848, he lost renomination. Men i 1848 så tappte han renominasjonen. Then in 1849 he was rejected for the land officer position. Så i 1849 så ble han forkastet som en land officer position. 1854 he was defeated when he ran for the US Senate. Og i 1854 så ble han da slått når han skulle komme inn i senatet i USA. In 1856, he was defeated in his run to, to try to be the vice president. In 1856, he was in the And then in 1858, he was again defeated when he ran for U.S. Senate again. And in 1858, he was again defeated when he ran for U.S. Senate again. in 1858, Abraham, can we have a talk? Abraham, can we have a little talk? I, I just don't think you're cut out for this. Nei, jeg tror ikke det passer for deg, dette her. You need to find a different line of work. Nei, du må finne et nytt arbeid. I, I think you need to find a different life. Et annet liv må du finne deg. I mean, uh, you're doing something wrong. You must have some big sin in your life. Du uh, må jo ha gjort noe galt. Det er jo noe noen stor synd i livet ditt. Abraham, face it. People don't like you. Mm. Må, må du si, innse at folk liker deg ikke. But then in 1860, he gets elected president of the United States of America. Men så i 1860 så ble han valgt til presidenten i USA. He lived through one of the hardest times in America, the han, civil war. Han levde gjennom den tøffeste tiden i USA, den borgerkrigen. But now when people look back in history, når folk nå ser tilbake i historien, very few people even know about all of his defeats. Så er det veldig få som vet om alle nederlagene hans. Ja, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, Abraham Lincoln. Look at his monuments. Se på det svære monumentet. He was one of our greatest presidents. Han var en av våre største presidenter. If he would have allowed his history to speak to his future, he would have never stepped into greatness. Hvis han hadde sett på fortiden sin og blitt der, så ville han aldri kunne gå inn i fremtiden. 
in uh, America, we have uh, a famous sports figure named Babe Ruth. Anybody ever heard of Babe Ruth? Mm. Er en uh, kent figuur Baseball. Babe Ruth, baseball uh, speler. Babe Ruth. He is called the Home Run King. Han er Home Run Kongen. We even have a candy bar after him. Har till med choklad eller en godteri och kallt det så. Very very famous in America. Very Home Run King. USA. But you know what he's also called? Men du vet ju också han är kallt the strikeout king. The strikeout. Ja, det är det som slår ut, ja, det som slår ut mest gånger. Cuz he struck out more than anybody else. För han slog liksom ut av banan flest gånger. But he also hit more home runs than anybody else. Men också mer home runs än någon andra har gjort. People don't remember the strikeouts. Han de husker inte det som han kastade ut av banan. What do they remember? Vad är det de husker? He's the home run king. Det är det home run kungen. What I'm saying is you sometimes have to purpose to let go of some things in your life. Noen ganger er det en hensikten at du må la noe ligge i livet ditt. The truth of it is as we're going through life Sannheten er at vi går gjennom livet We have a way of accumulating baggage and all kinds of stuff. Så akkumulerer vi dårlig bagasje inn i oss. If you never move from one house to another you usually accumulate too much stuff. Og hvis ikke du flytter fra et hus til et annet så samler du opp alt for mye. But the truth is, we keep accumulating things that have happened to us. Men sannheten er at vi akkumulerer og samler opp tingene, det som har hendt oss. And if you don't know how to get rid of that baggage, og hvis ikke du blir kvitt den bagasjen, your journey gets heavier and heavier and heavier. Så blir den reisen tyngre og tyngre og tyngre. And then if you're not able to let go of some things, og hvis ikke du lar ting gå, See, if you can't let go of this side, you'll never go to that side. Hvis du ikke lar den siden være, så kommer du aldri over på den andre siden. People are trying to move forward. I'm going to move forward, but then they're not going to let go of their past. Folk prøver å gå videre og videre, men så klarer de ikke å la det gamle være. If you're all weighted down, it's really hard to run. Hvis det er nedtynget, så er det veldig vanskelig å løpe. It's really hard to advance. Det er tøft å avansere. And so God has always purposed for us to learn how to unload all of our baggage. Så Guds hensikt er å bare at du skal legge ned alle byrdene. God wants us to go for the gold. At vi skal gå etter gull. He wants us to be that, that Olympian champion. Det olympiske mesteren skal vi være. But how many know, we see them at the Olympics and go, wow, they got the gold. Så ser vi på de som vinner i olympiaden og sier, se, de fikk gullet. But we don't watch them when they fail and fail and fail trying to do a, a, a new move. Så ser vi det, vi ser ikke det at de å, de feiler og feiler og de mislykkes og får det ikke til. Or the hours when the coaches are getting on them and saying you're messing up, come on, do it right, change. Eller den treneren som står over dem og sier at gjør på noen annen måte, du må forandre deg. Why are they a champion? Hvorfor er de en mester? Because they didn't stop. Fordi de stoppet ikke. They had greatness in their heart. De har storhet i hjertet sitt. I was made for something special. Jeg er skapt for noe spesielt. I'm gonna be a champion someday. Jeg skal bli en mester en dag. I'm willing to do what it takes. Jeg skal gjøre det som det trengs. I'm going to change my diet. Jeg skal forandre måten jeg spiser på. I'm going to change my routine. Mine rutiner. I may not go out with my friends to do everything they do. Jeg kan ikke gå ut med vennene mine og gjøre alt det de gjør. I have a goal in mind. Jeg har et mål der fremme. And I'm going to go for the excellence that I can have released out of my life. Og skal jeg gå ut til det utmerkede, det eksellente. When it's, uh, the word excellent means something that is surpassing above and beyond. For the word excellence betyder det som overgår alt og baken for det også. In the military, they say somebody has gone above and beyond the call of duty. Det i militæret så så har de liksom at de går baken for det som er plikten deres. Some soldiers just did their duty. Det er kanskje soldater som bare gjorde plikten sin. Some got a medal because they went above and beyond what they had to do. Men så var det noen som fikk medaljer fordi de gjorde gjorde mye mer enn det. And so now we look at them as a hero. Så nå ser vi på dem som en helt. Because they went for greatness. For de gikk etter storhet. The spirit of excellence was upon them. Den ånd av excellence var over dem. One person says you only get out of something what you're willing to put into it. Det er noen som sier at du bare får tilbake det du putter ned i det. It's like one time uh, the, this preacher came into a, a new church to minister. Det var en predikant som kom for å tjenestegjøre i en menighet. And uh, the, the pastor said, we're glad to have you here and uh, we, we want to receive your ministry. Så sa pastoren at det er godt at vi har deg, vi vil motta det du gir. And he said, well, we don't really take offerings here. Men vi tar ikke offer her. We have a box in the back. Vi har en sånn boks på, i bakerst der. And so, 
Whatever goes in that box is yours. That's your det som går in i den boxen det är er ditt. So the the minister thought, well, you know, I got a couple kroners in my pocket. Ja, så 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 sa den där som kom och skulle tjänstgöra. Jag bara putter nå i boxen den mynter i lomma. Went up, he preached, he was done. Okay, praise God, that was good. Ja, så nu var färdig så ja, nej men det var gott, det var bra. The pastor said, your offering is in the box. Så sa han pastorn att ja, det offret det är då i boxen. So he went down, he opened up the box. Och så gick han ner där och öppnade upp boxen. Pulled out two kroners. Och tog tog ut två kronor. He said, Pastor, Pastor, this is only two kroners. Det var to kroner her. And I put those in there. Og det var jeg som puttet det ned i der. And the pastor said, all I can say is this. Og pastor sa, alt jeg kan si er dette. If you would have put more in, you would have got more out. Hvis du hadde puttet ned i, så hadde du gått mer opp igjen. <laughs> okay, it's a joke, right? Det var en spøk, da. <laughs> One person said, he who expects nothing shall never be disappointed. <laughs> Det er en som sa at hvis du, hvis du forventer noe, så vil aldri bli skuffet. But you also need to know good is not good enough Sorry. if you know the potential for greatness mm-hmm. is inside of you. Sorry, can you repeat that? I got to Good is not good enough when you know the potential for greatness <laughs> is inside of you. Uh, sorry, uh, once more. Good so, is not good enough. Er ikke godt nok? When you know the potential for greatness is inside of you. Når du vet at det potensialet for storhet er i deg. Because God always looks at percentages. For Gud ser alltid efter the percentages in your life. Og prosenter i livet ditt. You know, tithe, ten percent. Ja, tide. He looked at the the widow's uh, might or one penny. Den enken gav jo en penny. And he says she gave more. Hun gav mer. She didn't give more because of the amount. Hun fikk ikke mer på grunn av det hun gav. She gave gav. more because of the percentage. Hun gav mer etter det prosenten. She gave all that she had. Hun gav alt det hun hadde. So it's not a matter of you comparing yourself to someone else. Hvis du sammenligner deg med noen andre. Oh, they're smarter. They're, they, they, they do better at this or that. De er smarte. De gjør bedre i det og det. No, God is asking you to do the best you can. Gud ber å gjøre det beste det du kan. And if you're giving the percentage, I'm giving my best. Og hvis du gir det prosenten av det, jeg gjør mitt beste. But God's saying, well done, son, well done, daughter. Så sier det Gud, vel gjort, datter, vel gjort, sønn. Because you're a good and you're a faithful servant. Fordi at du er en god og trofast tjener. I want you to look in 1 Corinthians 9 with me. 1 Corinthians 9. And here we find, I believe, the mentality of one that's going to cross over. If you want the best in life, you've got to give your best. Some people want everybody else just to give to them, but they're not willing to give that way. 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 24. It says, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize, run in such a way that you may obtain that prize or obtain it. Vet dere ikke at alle de som deltar i et kappløp er med å løpe, men bare en får seiersprisen, løp da slik at dere kan få den. Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate or self-controlled in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Og hver det som deltar i kappløpet forsaker alt annet. De gjør det for å oppnå en forgjengelig krans, men vi gjør det for en uforgjengelig. So, I want to fulfill my prophecy. Jeg vil oppfylle min profeti. I want to fulfill my destiny. Jeg vil oppfylle min skjebne. Well, maybe it could just all happen in one big bang. Hallelujah. Kanskje det skjer med et pang bare. And now it's just taking place out of nowhere. Så tar det bare finner det sted bare ut av ingenting. But how many know an overnight success doesn't really happen overnight? Men det de vet jo det at en sånn som skjer over natten, det skjer ikke bare plutselig over natten. It's just that they come to light overnight. Det kommer til den rette da på den andre siden av natten. But they probably have been preparing themselves their whole life. Men de har forberedt seg sannsynligvis hele livet. Every time you obey God. Hver gang du adlyder Gud, Every time you sacrifice. Hver gang du offrer. Every time you do it right, even when you've been done oh, done wrong or given you a bad hand. At du gjør det riktig selv om det har blitt dårlig behandlet. You are preparing yourself 
for God's release of destiny upon your life. Så förbered dig därför Guds skepne och förlösning över livet ditt. When you're faithful over the little things, när du är trofast i det lilla, God sees. Så ser Gud det. God's watching what you're doing with the little. Gud ser vad du gör med det lilla. Because he says, okay, they have a servant's heart. Ja, for han, ser han, han har et they, they're, they're willing to love and to give. De er til å, til gi. They're willing to forgive when they get hurt. De er til til når de blir såret. They're faithful with their finances, faithful with their gifts. De er med sine og sine. So I can give them the true riches of the kingdom. So you're, you're going for the prize and you have to be self-controlled, it says. It always preach a lot of sermons about being self-controlled. I want to be spirit-controlled. Jeg vil kontrollert av ånden. Oh, hallelujah, the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Spirit made me do it. Ja, spirit, la meg, ånd, la meg gjøre det. But you also can choose to do what's right. Men du kan også velge å gjøre det som er riktig. And that means you're being changed into his image from glory to glory. Det betyr at du blir forvandlet til hans bilde fra herlighet til herlighet. So therefore I run like this, not with uncertainty, uncertainty, but I fight not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest uh, when I preach to others, I myself would become disqualified. Det forløper jeg ikke usikkerhet. Jeg kjemper ikke som en som slår ut i løse luften, men jeg legger tvang på min kropp og holder den i trelldom slik at jeg... Uh, jeg som har forkynt for andre ikke selv skal bli forkastet. So, I'm going to make sure uh, that I'm preaching the right thing. Så jeg skal være, være viss på at jeg prediker de riktige ting. But I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm going to make sure I'm also doing the right thing. Men jeg vil ikke være en hykler og ikke gjøre de rette tingene. How many believe the preacher ought to believe what he preaches? Sorry. How many believe the preacher ought to practice what they preach? How many believe the congregation ought to do what they sing? We, we want to be ones that have integrity. Integrity means that you're the same all the way through. Det betyder att du är er den samma helt igenom. So God's always going to challenge you about his ways and his standards. Så Gud vill att du utfordrar dig när det gäller hans vägar och hans standarder. Why do you come to a prophetic conference? Varför kommer du till en profetisk konferens? I want to hear another word. Jag vill höra ett annat ord, nytt ord. Uh, I want to feel good about myself. Jag vill att det ska följa mig gott med mig well, själv. I hope you get edified. Och jag hoppar att det blir uppbyggt. But the thing that really should happen. Men det som verkligen skulle ske is God should challenge you. At Gud skulle utfordra dig. He should challenge you about your identity. Utfordra dig när det gäller din identitet. Challenge you about his calling. När det gäller hans kall. And his purpose in your life and in your land. Och hans hensikter i ditt liv och i ditt land. If at the end of the, of the day you're not challenged, then I haven't done my job. Och vi sikter det på slutet av dagen inte har blivit utfordrat så har jag gjort jobben men. Or maybe the spirit of the Lord hasn't really been released. Eller kanske den helgon inte har blivit förlöst. Because when God speaks, it should challenge you. För när Gud snakker, talar så skulle utfordra dig. The truth of it is, we're all weighed before the Lord. Sannheten er at vi blir alle veid foran Gud. Remember Belshazzar, he was having that feast. Belshazzar, han hadde den, den festen. And all of a sudden, the handwriting on the wall began to write. Og så kommer den hånden, skriften som tegner på veggen. And see, God had dealt with his dad, Nebuchadnezzar. For uh, Gud hadde jo håndtert faren hans, Nebuchadnezzar. And God had changed his heart. Og Gud hadde forvandlet hjertet hans. But his son hadn't really received what he needed to receive. Men sønnen hans hadde ikke mottatt det han trengte å motta. See, we all have to receive for ourselves what God is saying. Vi må motta for oss selv det som Gud sier. Praise God, my dad is a powerful minister. Takk Gud at, Gud, at faren min han er en mektig tjeneste. But that does not excuse me to say <laughs> I can just live off what he did. Det kan ikke, uh, oh sorry. That does not excuse me that to say I can just live off what he's done. Mm. Betyr at jeg kan ikke leve på det han har gjort. I have to for myself obey God. Jeg må adlyde Gud selv for meg selv. So Belshazzar right there was faced with that reality. Så han så den realiteten da på veggen. 
The finger of God right on the right on the wall. Many men and tekel you farsen. Ja, men och män tekel som han skrev på väggen där. You have been weighed in the balances and found lacking. Du har blivit vägd och funnet för lätt. So God's looking at every one of us. Så so Gud ser på varje en sten av oss. And saying, can you step up and accomplish what I've made you for? Kan du gå upp och utföra det som jag kallat dig till? But the wonderful thing is, success in God's eyes is different than success in man's eyes. Men det som är gott är det det att det som är succé människors ögon är inte succé i Guds ögon. Man always measures success by the numbers game. För människor målar alltid succé utifrån antal. How much money do you have? Hur mycket pengar har du? Uh, how much land do you have? Hur mycket land har du? How big is your house, your car? Hur stor är bilen din, huset ditt? How many members do you have in your church? Hur många medlemmar har du i din menighet? How big is your ministry? Hur stor är din tjänst? But that's not how God measures success. Men det är inte det som Gud målar succé på. I mean, Jesus at times had thousands following him. Hur sa det Jesus och tusenvis som följt ham? And at times he had almost no one following him. Och så hade han ingen nästan som följt ham. If our success is measured by numbers, vi succéen skulle bli målt på antal. Then we'll never feel successful the way God wants us to. Så vi vill aldrig få succéen som Gud önskar att ha. Because the truth is that ebbs and flows. For sannet är att det flow och ebbe. We look out and we see the grain on the harvest field right now. När vi ser nå på kornet på åkern. Beautiful abundant harvest. En vacker stor höst. But pretty soon it'll all be reaped and in the barn and then like oh the ground's barren. Och så blir det inhöstet och så kommer det och så ja men det här är ju kunna nå se där. God doesn't play the numbers game. Gud ser inte på det antalet. He plays the name game. Han spelar spelar det spelet som när det gäller namn. And what he's after is your name and your identity. Och det han ute efter är namnet ditt och identiteten din. At the end of the day, he will ask one question. På slutet av dagen vill han ställa ett spörsmål. Have you been good and have you been faithful? Har du varit god? Har du varit trofast? And so it's not about oh, I wrote ten books or I wrote no books. Det är kommer an på om jag har skrivit 10 böcker eller ingen böcker. If I write 10 books and I'm supposed to write 50 then he may say hey what were you doing? Så vi står har att skriva 10 och skulle ha skrivit 50 så lurar han kanske på vad i all världen var du gjort. But if I wrote 10 books and he didn't really care about my books he wanted me to do something else he's going to say what were you doing for yourself? Så vi står har skrivit 10 böcker och det egentligen skulle ha gjort någon så vill han kanske lura på vad i all världen har du gjort med livet ditt. What God wants to know how are you good and will you be faithful to what he's asked you to do. Han önskar då vite om det var trofast mot det han vill att att du ska göra det han har sagt du ska göra. That's why he's saying comparing yourself to someone else is not wise. Det var skär det med att sammanligna sig med andra inte en vis ting att göra. So in Philippians chapter 3 in verse 7. Och Filipperne 3 7 till 15. But what things were gained to me, these things I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Verse 7. Men allt det som var en vinning för mig det regnar jag som tap för Kristi skull. Ja så visst det regnar jag allt som tap sammanlignat med det som är som är mer värt kunskapen om Kristus Jesus min Herre. På grund av ham har jag lite tap på allt och jag regnar det som söppel för att jag ska vinna Kristus. Och bli funnet i ham, inte med min egen rättfärdighet, det som är av loven, men den som är gitt vid troen på Kristus, det rättfärdigheten som är av Gud på grund av troen. Uh, verse 9, I read to the 9. Just verse 8, yeah. Okay. So, here Paul is saying, you know, I've accomplished a lot of things. Så här säger Paulus, jag uppnådde en massa. Man, in, in the natural, people really looked up to me. I was a Pharisee, everybody thought I was great. I den naturlige så var jo det at det var fariser og alle så opp til meg. But he said then when I really answered the call of God. Men når jeg virkelig svarte på Guds kall. I discounted all of that. Så så jeg bort fra alt det. I didn't live off of any of that. Jeg levde ikke på det i det hele tatt. I said whatever it takes, I just want to follow Christ. Du har sett hva det koster så vi er følge Kristus. The highest call upon your life. Det høyeste kallet på livet ditt. Is to be conformed to the image of Christ. Det er å bli forvandlet til Kristi lignelse. 
Because if that takes place within your life, hvis det sker i livet ditt, you will live and operate out of the anointing of Jesus. Så vil operere ut av salvelsen til Jesus Kristus. And you will fulfill the greatness that God has upon your life. Og du vil oppfylle den storheten som Jesus har for livet ditt. It goes on in verse 13. It says this. Vers 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended or arrived, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Vers 13. 13 and 14. Søsken, tror ikke om meg selv at jeg har grepet det, men et gjør jeg. Jeg glemmer det som er bak og strekker meg ut av det som ligger foran. Jeg jager mot målet, mot den seierspris som Gud fra det høye kalte oss til i Kristus Jesus. He's saying, this one thing I've learned. Dette er det jeg har lært. One thing I've learned to do is I've got to let go of the past. Det har lært at jeg må la fortiden gå. If I'm going to reach forward to that high calling, I cannot allow my past to control me. One person said, if you live in the past, you'll die in the present. You've got to be willing to let go of your mistakes, your problems. Du må la dine feil og problemer gå. And even some of your accomplishments. Oh, till med det du har klart att öppna, som är er bra. Saying these things are not going to control my future. Dessa tingen ska inte kontrollera min framtid. I'm going to take on the identity God has for me. Jag ska ta den identiteten som Gud har för mig. So I want to just give you a few things that you need to overcome. Så jag ska ge dig några punkter som var det som måste övervinna. Uh, in the English, the word past is P-A-S-T. Det vi har på på fortid har på på engelsk är past. So if you know English at all, you can use that to remember this. Men alle kan da bruke der som en hukommelsesregel for å huske disse punktene. But the P stands for your pain. Den P'en står for, kan du si, plage, smerte. Things that hurt you in this life want to control your future. Det som sårer deg at ikke det skal kontrollere din fremtid. Listen, all of us get hurt. Hør nå, alle oss blir såret. Oh, well, you were a pastor's kid. Ja, men du, du, jeg var jo en pastors barn. You would never get hurt in the church. Du vil aldri bli da såret i menigheten. How many know you can get hurt in the church? Hvem vet hvor, at det kan bli virkelig såret how, i menigheten? How many know pastors' families can get hurt? Og pastors' familie blir såret. How many know that people can still talk bad about you even though you're a Christian? At mennesker kan snakke stygt om dig selv om du er en kristen. And sometimes it hurts even worse when it's somebody you know. Og det sårer endda mer når det er nogen du kender. Your pain wants to control you. Den sårethed din den vil kontrollere dig. The, the truth is none of us function well in pain. Det er sant at vi funktion vi fungerer ikke så godt i smerte. How many have ever had a severe headache? Er det nogen hvem hvor mange har haft en virkelig do altså vund hodepine? Two of you. Oh, okay, a few more. Right. <laughs> if you ever have a bad headache, you don't, you don't think right. Du klarer ikke å tenke rett. You can't work right. Du kan ikke arbeide rett. You don't act right. Du kan ikke handle rett. That pain seems to want to control the way you can live. Den smerten din kontroller, vil kontrollere måten du lever på. The truth is, the enemy wants to control your life through pain. Sannheten er at fin vi kontrollerer livet ditt gjennom smerte. And many times he tries to bring up the pain of your past to control your future. Og noen ganger så bringer han da den såretheten din smerten din fra fortiden for å kontrollere fremtiden din. I remember not long ago we were ministering to a girl that had been severely abused. Ja, vi tjenestgjorde for en jente som ble mi- veldig misbrukt. And because of that severe abuse it, it had affected her self image. Og på grund av det misbruket så hadde hun et dårlig selvbilde det hadde påvirket selvbildet hennes. And so she could not perceive herself rightly. Så hun kunne ikke se på sig selv på en riktig måte. And she ended up becoming severely anorexic. Så hun ble da anorektisk på grunn av det. Which, which means she stopped eating because she thought she was fat. Hun sluttet å spise fordi hun trodde hun var fet. And so even though she was very skinny she still was thinking I'm too fat. Og selv om hun da var kjempeslang, så trodde hun det at hun var fet. And when we met her, she almost looked like a skeleton, a living skeleton. Når vi så henne da første gang, så så hun som et levende skjelett. And then the Lord said, minister the word of life to her. Så sa Gud til oss at hun må dere tjenestegjøre for henne med livets ord. And we didn't know anything about her life. Og vi visste jo ikke noe om livet hennes i det hele tatt. But we began to prophesy to her. Vi begynte å profetere over henne. And the Lord began to say, 
I've called you from death to life. Og Gud sa til henne, jeg kalte deg fra død til liv. And this is the season I'm going to heal and nourish your soul. Og jeg skal nære i denne tiden sjelen din. And even as I do that, it's going to affect your physical body. Og når jeg gjør det, så kommer det til å påvirke din fysiske kropp. And I decree to you, you shall live. Og jeg erklærer over deg at du skal leve. Not only shall you live, but you shall thrive and come alive. Men ikke noe med, du skal også trives og virkelig fryde deg, og du skal leve. And the Lord says, you're going to get married and you're going to have children. Du skal gifte deg, og du skal få barn. Well, all of a sudden, she just bent a break and cried. Så begynte hun å bryte ut i gråt. We didn't know that this... Time in her life that all the doctors had pretty much given up on her. I det det sted av livet henne så havde alle læger de havde gitt op henne. And she was now at a ministry home, and they, you know, said the parents, this is our last chance. Og hun var hjemme og forældrene sagde det at det er sidste mulighed henne. And the doctor said there's only a small chance that you'll live. Legen hadde sagt at bare en liten mulighet for at du kommer til å leve. But if you do live, for sure, you will never be able to have children because of the damage you've done to the organs of your body. Og hvis du likevel kommer til å leve, så kan du ikke få barn, for det har ødelagt så mye inni deg, de organene dine. And this girl that we ministered to, it was about 10 years ago or more. Det er jo cirka 10 år siden nå, for vi tjenestgjorde for henne. But we ran into her last year. Men vi er til å treffe henne da for et års tid siden. And she looks so healthy and happy. Hun så sunn og glad ut. And she goes, oh, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you. Jeg må fortelle deg, jeg må fortelle deg. Remember that word you gave to me? Husker du ordet som du ga til meg? Hun sa, no. Nei. But praise God, I know it was a good word. Pris Gud, jeg vet at det er et godt ord. And she goes, oh, and she gave us, told us the word. Og så fortalte hun det ordet. And I want you to know, I got married and I have a child. Not only that, I'm now pregnant with my seventh child. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. God said, I not only want to give you life, I want to give you abundant life. But as she had lived out of the pain of her abuse and let that stay in her heart, she would have never laid hold of the greatness that God had for her. To cross over into the new, you've got to let go of the pain. Because God can change all the things around about you. For Gud kan forandre det som er rundt og kring dig. But if you don't change, your life won't change. Men hvis ikke du forandrer deg, så virker livet ditt forvandle seg. Because I've seen God do everything necessary for a person to be happy. For jeg har sett Gud gjøre alt for å gjøre en person lykkelig. But they're not happy because they're still living in the past. Men de er ikke lykkelig for de fortsatt lever i fortiden. And I've seen people that have everything and every reason to be sad. Og jeg har sett mennesker som har all grunn for å være triste. But they're happy because they're living by faith and living for the future God has told them about. Men de lever i glede for de ser på det fremtiden som Gud har. God wants to heal you of your pain. Gud ønsker å helbrede deg for din smerte. So that pain will not control you and keep you from your future. Så det smerten ikke holder deg tilbake og hindrer deg å gå fremover. The A stands for anger. Anger. P-A-S-T Anger Ja, det neste er A-sinne P-A-S-T A for anger Anger? Anger Anger Sinne It's a small word, anger Inger The truth of it is All of us have to deal with anger Alle må håndtere det med sinne When you have a loss in your life Når du har et tap i livet ditt If that loss is not resolved Hvis det tap ikke er løst Then the spirit of grief comes upon you Så kommer sorgens ånd over deg And one of the stages of grief is anger Og en av stadiene der er sinne And if you do not get through that to resolve Og hvis ikke det kommer forbi det og det blir løst You get stuck with anger Så sitter du fast i det sinne Anger turned inward is called depression og det er en sinne som går innover, det kaller depresjon. Anger turned outward is called aggression. Og det er en sinne som ender utover er aggresjon. And when anger is there, you live a frustrated life. Og når sinne er der, så er det et frustrerende liv. And that anger will tether you to your past, because you won't let go and resolve whatever you lost. Så den sinne vil holde festet på deg, så du kan ikke bli fri. So God wants to break the spirit. 
of anger that's inside of many of us. Så Gud vil bryte den ånd av sinne som er over deg. And sometimes we don't even recognize what's taking place. Og noen ganger så kjenner vi ikke igjen det som skjer. But God will say, I need to go do some divine surgery on you. Men så sier Gud at jeg vil gjøre noe guddommelig kirurgi inni deg. And I need to disarm that ticking time bomb in your heart. Og jeg må desarmere den bomben som er i deg. Because that anger is trying to bring stress that will destroy you. For det sinnet vil bringe stress som vil ødelegge deg. And I want to bring my peace into the midst of that angry part of your heart. Og så skal jeg bringe min fred inn i det sinnet som er i hjertet ditt. The S in past, it stands for shame. Den S-en, den står for skam. Shame is what the enemy wants to bring to every one of our lives. Skam er det som fine ønsker å bringe inn i alle livene våre. Shame will rob you of the glory. Skam vil frata deg æren. And it will hook you to the mistakes of your past. Og du vil feste deg i skammet fra fortiden. And it will tell you you are a bad person. Og fortell at du er en dårlig person. Not that you made a mistake, you are a mistake. Ikke at du gjør feil, men du er en feil. And it will bring to you something called condemnation. Og du vil bringe deg inn for selvfordømmelse. Conviction is a good thing. Det er overvisning, er en god ting. Conviction says there's something wrong, you need to change. Og det sier at det er noe galt som du må forandre. Condemnation says there's something wrong, you can't change. Selvfordømmelse er liksom ting som du ikke kan forandre. Condemnation comes just to beat you over the head. You're a bad person, you're a bad person, you're a bad person. Fordømmelse kommer bare å slå deg i hodet. Du er en dårlig person, du er en dårlig person. Conviction comes to say, you shouldn't be doing that, you shouldn't be doing that, you shouldn't be doing that. Og overvisning er at du skulle ikke ha gjort det, du skulle ikke ha gjort det, du skulle ha gjort det. You need that. Du trenger det. So you can change. Så du kan forandre deg. But condemnation makes you feel hopeless. Men fordømmelse gjør at du føler deg håpløs. That's the assignment of shame upon your life. Det kaster skam over livet ditt. One of the terrible tragedies in our world today. En av de største tragediene i verden i dag. Is something called teen suicide. Det er tenårings selvmord. And it is rampant in the Western world. Og den er økende i den vestlige verden. Young people that have become hopeless early in their life. Unge mennesker som føler en håpløshet i livet sitt i en ung alder. The death culture has laid a hold of them. Dødskulturen har fått tak i dem. And they don't believe things can change for the better. De tror ikke at det kan forandre seg til det bedre. The shame in our culture has overwhelmed them. Skammen i livet har overveldet dem. To the point that they want to take their own life. Så mye at de ønsker å ta sitt eget liv. That's the enemy's plan to rob, kill, and destroy. Det er djevelens plan om å myrde og ødelegge. The other part of your past is your trouble. Og den siste der, det er trouble. Trouble. Your trouble, your trials, the times of testing. Prøvelser og tester. How many know we all go through some stuff? Alle vet at vi går gjennom forskjellige ting. But when you begin to look at it with God's perspective, Når vi ser det fra Guds perspektiv, then everything that you walk through is an opportunity for you to learn. Men da er det en mulighet for deg å lære. When you go through a test, you may fail some things. Når du går gjennom en prøve, så kanskje du mislykkes. But you're not a failure if you learned what you needed to learn through that test. Men du er ikke mislykket i at vi skal lære av det du har gjort feil. If you learn from your mistakes, you're a success. Hvis du lærer av dine feil, så er det en suksess. In fact, that's one of the major ways of learning. Det er den beste måten å lære på. Science calls it trial and error. Vitenskapelig kaller det prøv og feil. Oh, didn't work. This test didn't work. Oh, didn't work. Didn't work. Didn't work. Oh, success. We finally got it. Dette virket ikke. Dette virket ikke. Oh, det virket. That guy's a great discoverer. Oh, du er en stor oppdager. You know how many times he failed? Vet du mange ganger han mislykkes? How many tests he went through and he didn't get it right? Og mange tester han gikk gjennom og fikk det ikke til. But finally he gets one right. Men så plutselig fikk han en ting til. I figured it out, I figured it out. Ja, jeg klarte det, jeg skjønte det. How did you figure it out? Hvordan skjønte du det? By doing a bunch of things wrong. Vi gjorde masse ting feil. Come on. Ja, kom igjen. So what, you made a mistake. Å, hva om du gjorde en feil? So what, you failed at something. Så hva, du ikke klarte noe. So what, somebody wagged their finger and say, shame, shame, shame. Og kanskje noen løfter pekefingeren og sier, skam, skam, skam. If you learned your lesson. Hvis du har lært leksa di. You're a success. Så er det en suksess. Because now you can rise above those things. For nå kan du løfte deg over det. The enemy wants to keep you from crossing over. Fiende vil hindre deg å krysse over. By making you live in the past. Ved å få deg til å leve i fortiden. Look what it says in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7. I en, what? 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 4. 4. 4. 
Vær så andre korinterne 4, 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our body. Men vi har denne skatten i leirkar, for at den veldig kraften skal være av Gud og ikke av oss. Vi er forfullt, men ikke forlatt, nedslått, men ikke ødelagt. Og alltid bærer vi Herren Jesu død med oss i kroppen, for at Jesu liv skal åpenbares i vår kropp. For vi som lever blir alltid overlatt til døden for Jesu skyld, for at, vi, for at også Jesu liv skal åpenbares i vår dødelige kropp. You may be pressed down. Det kanskje er trykket ned. You may get knocked down. Kanskje du blir slått ut. The question is, do you get back up or not? Men spørsmålet er om du reiser deg igjen. The heart of a champion gets back up. Hjertet til en mester det er å reise Keeps seg opp. Keeps on fighting. Han fortsetter å kjempe. Verse 15, for all things are for your sakes, that grace, having uh, spread through the many, may uh, cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Um, for alt dette skjer for deres skyld, og for at nåden, når den ved stadig flere har spredt seg utover, kan føre til takk i rikelig mål til Guds, til Guds ære. Derfor mister vi ikke motet, for selv om vårt yttre menneske går til grunne, blir likevel det indre menneske fornyet dag for dag. For vår trengsel som er lett, og som bare var en kort stund, og virker for oss en enda mer overstrømmende og evig fylde av herlighet. You know, after 40 years of ministry, etter å ha tjenestgjort nå i 40 år. You know who I see make it in life and in their call? Vet du hvem jeg ser som klarer det og lykkes i livet sitt? It's those that are humble. Er de som er ydmyke. When they get lifted up in pride every time they get taken out. Så hvis de blir løftet opp i, i, i stolthet, så, så, så blir de ikke stolte. I can do what I want, do it the way I want. Vi kan gjøre det på måten jeg vil. I'm smarter than God, I can tell God what to do. Kanskje du sier at du kan gjøre, jeg kan gjøre som jeg vil. Then that pride will take them out. Men den stoltheten, det vil ta dem ut. And what I found is people that walk in humility. Men jeg ser at de som vandrer i ydmykhet. They have a certain quality. De har en spesiell kvalitet. It's called thankfulness. Det kalles takknemlighet. And people that make it all the way through have a thankful heart. Og de som klarer det gjennom hele veien, de you know, har en takknemlig natur. It's just, you appreciate all the good things. De, de setter pris på alt det gode. They're not going to be negative about life and everything that's taking place. De blir ikke negativ alt det som skjer rundt dem. They don't let their past cloud the present. De lar ikke fortiden overskygge fremtiden. Well, I could have died back then, but thank God I'm alive today. <laughs> jeg kunne ha dødd da, men takk Gud at jeg er i live i dag. They're always looking for the good. De ser alltid etter det gode. And they're always giving thanks to God. De alltid Gud takk. And look what the Apostle Paul says in verse 17. For our light 17. affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we do not look at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Vers 17 og 18. For vår trengste som er lett og som bare var en kort stund virker for oss en enda mer overstrøn og evig fylde av herlighet i det vi ikke retter blikket på de synlige ting, men på de usynlige. For de synlige ting er forgjengelige, men de usynlige er evige. Det er Guds perspektiv på hva du vandrer igjennom. Understanding that this is just temporary. Forstå at dette er bare midlertidig. Turn to somebody and say, you're just here for a little while. Si, vend deg om og si, si til Leland, du er bare her for en liten tid. This light affliction. <laughs> But you know, when it, when it says, I press toward the mark of the high calling. Når Paulus sier at jeg er jager mot det høye kallet. That word there in the Greek is skopos. Det er gresk ordet skopos. And it really speaks of like a scope on a gun. Det, det, den der um, kikkert sikte på en pistol etter våpen. It means that you're taking aim at something. Du mål, måler noe, du, du skal ta mål av noe langt der fremme. How many have ever tried to aim something? Er det noen som har tatt sikte på noe her? What do you usually do? You close ja. one eye, right? Du, du lukker det ene øyet. Single eye. 
Looking straight. Keeping your eye on the target. Breathing slow. Pull the trigger. Hit the mark. Says, I know how to forget the past. Keep my eye on my future. And pull the trigger of faith and saying, I'm going to hit the mark. This one thing I know how to do. So back to this story where Jesus is saying, cross over to the other side. So tillbaka till story where Jesus säger, kryss over på den andra sidan. And he's speaking to one disciple. Han snakkar till en disippel. And he's saying, hey, do you really want to follow me? Vill du verkligen följa mig, säger Jesus? Then you're going to have to be like a pioneer going into new territory. Så måste du vara som en pionjär och gå in i nya territorier. Another disciple, do you really want to follow me? Så en av disciplen, en disippel, vill du verkligen följa mig? I got to take care of all this other stuff. Nej, jag måste ta mig ta tag i de andra tingen först. Let the dead bury their own dead. Låt de döda begrava sina egna döda. But as for you, follow me. Men när det gäller dig, följ mig. Because it's time to cross over, you're going to have to let go of some things. För att krysta över så måste du glömma någonting. Get over some stuff. Du måste bara komma över det. Put the past in the past. Låt fortid vara fortid. Because it's time to move forward in faith. För det är på tiden nu att förflytta sig i tro. Lighten your load if you will to get to where you got to go Ta la byrden blir lättare så du kommer dit du ska komma A storm arises Det är en storm som börjar att komma and then they run down into the middle of the boat and they say Jesus Jesus wake up Så löper de mitt in i båten där och så säger Jesus Jesus vakna upp Jesus Oh Jesus som var för nu What's going on? Vad som sker? We're dying Jesus don't you know Vi dör Jesus vet du vad som sker You're dying Du Really what's going on? Vi vet inte vad som sker There's a storm Om det är en storm ju And Jesus says Really a storm Vi dör en storm You woke me up for a storm. Väckte mig upp för en storm. I was just getting into the alpha zone of my sleep. Jag kom akkurat in i mitten av den tunga sömnen. This was my chance to get a nap from that side to the other. Det var min möjlighet för en sömn då från ena sidan till den andra. Okay, okay, if you gotta wake me up. He goes up and he rebukes the winds and waves. Peace, be still. Så för man har en storm att säga, var stilla. Whoa, cool. Everything's changed. Allt förvandlat. And Jesus turns around. Thanks, guys, for waking me up. Och så snudde Jesus sig och sa tack för att det väckte mig. No, what did he say? Nej, det var sant. How come you woke me up? Och för väckte det mig? Didn't I tell you to go to the other side? Så jag sa inte till dig att vi skulle gå på den andra sidan. Where was your faith? Var var troen deras? What was Jesus saying to him? Vad sa Jesus till dem? He was saying, I didn't need to be woken up. Det var inte nödvändigt att väcka mig upp. No, what I wanted. Is the Jesus in you to be woken up? The I will that will I was that their that Jesus in their should be waked up. I allowed the storm to try to wake you up. I took to let the storm so that their should be waked up. God's answer to dark and desperate times is always the same. Jesus' answer to dark and desperate times is always the same. It's the spirit of awakening. The awakening is on. Come on, turn to somebody and say, "Hey, wake up!" Vem är det nu när säger vakna upp? It's the morning. Let the the light shine. Hallelujah. The morn, sola skiner. Sometimes when you wake up, you have to wake up to your divine purpose. Och någon gång när du vaknar upp så måste du komma in i din gudomliga hänsikt. But sometimes you have to wake up to your true condition as well. Men någon gång så kommer du måste du vakna upp till en virkelig position du är i. Sometimes we get real familiar with what's around us. Och någon gång blir vi virkelig känt med det som är runt oss. And we're comfortable with the way things are. Och komfortabelt med sånt som tingen är. Sometimes we don't even recognize what's taking place in our life. Så vi känner liksom inte igen det som sker i livet våra. The old story that you can put a frog in boiling water and he'll jump out, right? Det är den historien om att du putter en frosk ned i en kyl och han hoppar inte ut. But if you put him in lukewarm water and then start boiling it slowly, he won't recognize the change of temperature and he'll boil and die. Visst du så hela visst du putter i en kokande vatten så hoppar han ut med en gång men visst du låter den vattnet stiga sakta så vill ni inte märka det så vill den bli i vattnet. How much has our culture changed in just 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Hur mycket har kulturen vår förvandlat sig från 20, 30, 40, 50 år? How easy it is for us to change with the culture and not introduce the kingdom culture. Hvor det er ikke så lett å, det må forvandles, sorry, once more. How easy it is for us to change and conform to the world's culture 
and not actually be the transforming mm. force of the kingdom mm. culture. Hvor lett er ikke du blir forvandlet av den kulturen som som vi lever i i det i det naturlige i stedet for å bli forvandlet av den Guds rikes kultur. So uh, said so God speaks, he wants to challenge us. Når Gud taler så ønsker han å utfordre oss. And he begins to highlight things that he wants to change. Og han vil sette lys på ting som han ønsker å forvandle. But the spirit awakening comes to wake you up to your potential and your purpose. If you let go of the past, you can wake up to your future. Says, wake up, church. Wake up and arise. Says in the last days, watch and pray. It means be awake and be alert. Være våkne opp og være alert. So what does the enemy want to do? Hva vil fienden gjøre? Lull us to sleep. Den vil at vi skal sove, vugge oss i søvn. So we'll never wake up to who we really are. Sånn at vi ikke våkner opp til den vi virkelig er. So I want you to stand up and lift up your hands with me. Så nå skal du reise opp og så løft hendene sammen med meg. The truth of it is, God puts a calling upon every one of our lives. Så sannheten er at Gud har lagt et kall på hver enkelt av oss. But you have to choose into that calling. Men du velger selv å gå inn i det kallet. Many are called, but few are chosen. Men mange er kalt, men få er utvalgt. Many hear the call of God, but not everybody choose to do the call of God. Mange har hørt Guds kall, men velger da å ikke gå inn i det. But God's looking for a people to say, here am I, send me. Men Gud ser det til folk som sier, her er jeg, send meg. A people say, I will awaken to what you want to do in my generation. Jeg vil våkne opp til da du vil gjøre min generasjon. I'm not going to live in the past. Jeg ønsker ikke å leve i fortiden. I'm going to reach for my future. Jeg skal rekke ut etter min fremtid. So the first thing I want to do for you. Så det første jeg vil gjøre. I want you to just lift up your hands like this. Skal du løfte opp hendene sånn? Now, kind of... Open them wide like this. Open up so held up. Kind of like you're carrying a lot of stuff. Okay, so you're carrying a lot of things. All right, this is your stuff. This is your thing. What happened to you as a child? What happened to you as a child? What your parents did or didn't do for you. What did your parents do or didn't do for you? What happened in school? What happened in school? What happened in the church? What happened in the church? What happened in your family? What happened in family? What happened in business? What happened in the business world? The things that happened to you personally. What happened to you personally? Whatever your stuff is. All what this like type of stuff you have. Father, this is the weight I've carried. Se at det er den er den vægten jeg har båret. And it's bowed me down. Og det har bøjet mig ned. It wanted my head to hang low. Og det har fått mit hode til at hænge, at jeg får hænge med hodet. My hands to hang down and my knees to be feeble. Og mine hænder til at hænge og mine knæer til at være svage. But God, if I'm going to choose to cross over, men jeg skal vælge at krydse over. If I'm going to choose to do the new thing, hvis jeg skal vælge at gøre det nye, then I'm going to have to let go of the old associations. Så må jeg vælge at gå fra de gamle associationer. I'm going to have to let go of old, dead, ritualistic religion. All legalistisk og religiøs kristendom. I'm going to have to let go of the pain of my past. The smerten over fortiden min. I can't carry this where I'm called to go to. Jeg kan ikke bære det dit hvor jeg kalt til å gå. You want to take this weight off of my shoulders, off my mind. Du vil ta det ut av vekk fra skuldrene mine, ut av sinnet mitt. So Lord, what do I do with this stuff? Hva skal jeg gjøre med disse tingene, Gud? And Jesus says, Jesus sier, put them down at my feet. Legg dem ned ved mine føtter. Put it all down at my feet. Alt ned ved mine føtter. Just lay it down before the Lord. Legg Father, dem ned for I receive your forgiveness. Jesus. Jeg mottar det å glemme. I receive your love. Jeg mottar din kjærlighet. I, I receive the goodness that you have purpose to bring to me. Jeg mottar den godheten som du har til hensikt å gi meg. God, I'm thankful for every blessing. Jeg er takknemlig for hver velsignelse. And I now break old covenants. Jeg bryter nå alle gamle pakter. I lose myself from old connections. Jeg løser meg fra alle gamle forbindelser. Old habits. Gamle vaner. Old patterns. Gamle mønstre. That have brought death and destruction to me. Som bare har brakt død og ødeleggelse for meg. I shake myself free from darkness now. Jeg rister meg løs fra mørke nå. Come on, shake your hands. Shake yourself free.
Bare I let go of it. Fri, la det gå. I let go of it. Ja, bare det I gå. get over it. Bort ifra det. Now lift up your head. Nå lift, lift opp lift hodet. Up your hands. Lift, lift opp både hodet hender. The Father's looking down and shining upon your face. Fader ser ned og bare skinner på ansiktet He's deres. He's calling you forward. Han kaller dere fremover. He's got a hand in your back pushing you forward. Han har hånden sin på baksiden av ryggen og bare dytter deg fremover. And he's saying, son and daughter, come on, dotter, kom let's igjen. cross over. La oss krysse over. Awaken, oh Vakna. sleeper. Awaken, oh church in Norway. Vekk kirken i Norge. Awaken, people of destiny. Våkn opp, dere folk av skjebne. Awaken, prophetic church. Våkn opp, profetisk menighet. Awaken, apostolic anointing. Våkn opp, apostolisk salvelse. Let the atmosphere begin to shift. La atmosfære forvandle seg. God, we're crossing over. We're letting go and we're moving on. In Jesus' name. Yes, In Jesus' name. Yes, now, Lord, I cut every person free right now. Of every string that has been attached to them. That every time they move forward wants to pull them back again. Every time they get their eye on the prize, it wants to turn their head. God, we're tired of looking back. Gud, vi er trøtt på det å se tilbake. We're just letting that go and be our past. Vi lar det gå og si at fortid er fortid. You're healing my heart. Du helbreder mitt hjerte. You're renewing my mind. Du fornyer mitt sinn. You're renewing my youth. Du fornyer uh, ungdommen min. So I can run for your glory. Så so jeg kan løpe til din ære. Yeah! Yes! We receive it, Lord. Vi We receive det, it, Lord. Vi We receive it, Lord. Vi mottar det, Hallelujah. I want to minister to my sister right here. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I thank you for this anointed woman of God. Do you need translation? You want translation? All right. The Lord says, daughter, I have spoken to you in the night season. Uh, min datter har snakket til deg om natten. And I have released a revelation of my heart. Og jeg har forløst en oppenbaring i ditt hjerte. And I have given you truths that will set people free. Og jeg har gitt deg sannhet som vil sette mennesker fri. And the Lord says, this is a season of a fresh strategy I'm going to give to you. Og det er en tid for nye strategier som jeg vil gi deg. For I've given you road maps and, and days gone by. Og jeg har gitt deg kart og tiden har gått. And you recognize the signs and how to, to follow me on that road. Og du, har, du kjenner en tegn og vet hvordan du skal følge meg på den But veien. I see it's just like a, a, a Google map when it begins to zoom in. Det er som en sånn Google-kart, og så zoomer det inn. And God says, I'm going to give you more details than you've had before. Og Gud sier at jeg skal gi deg flere detaljer enn det du har fått før. And I'm going to begin to show you even the interworking of different things. Og jeg skal, se, jeg skal vise deg hvordan tingene jobber sammen. Body, soul, and spirit. Både ånd, sjel og kropp. Government. Church and the release of my purposes in the earth. Så skal jeg få løse min hensikte på jorden. And even businesses and business men and women. Og selv også forretning og forretningsfolk. And how I want to utilize their gifts, says the Lord. Hvordan jeg skal bruke deres gaver, sier Herren. And the Lord says, I'm going to begin to cause you to write even afresh and anew. Og jeg skal begynne å få deg til å skrive det friske og det nye. And you're going to share what I put inside of you, says the Lord. Og du skal dele det som jeg har gitt i hjertet ditt. And I've seen as you have fought the good fight. Og jeg har sett at du har kjempet den gode strid. And the Lord says, daughter, I understand what you've had to walk through. Og Herren sier at jeg har forstått det du har måttet gå igjennom. For you were in the very valley, the shadow of death, it felt. For du har følt det som om du har vært i dødskyens dal. But you knew I was with you. Men du har visst at jeg har vært med deg. And the Lord says, I'm going to restore. Og Herren sier at jeg vil gjenopprette. And I'm bringing you into a new place of rest and refreshing, says the Lord. Jeg skal bringe deg et nytt sted av hvile og forfriskning. For you will not be weary, and you will not be broken down. For du skal ikke være trøtt og ikke være nedbrutt. But you will abound with my glory, says the Lord. Men du skal bare stråle med min herlighet. And God says, I haven't written the end of the story yet. Jeg har ikke skrevet slutten av historien enda. So the Lord says, keep on writing and keep on reading. 
Så Gud säger att fortsätt att skriva och fortsätt att läsa. For I'm releasing an unfolding revelation to you. För jag ska visa dig en uppenbarelse som bara ska fortsätta. Teach many the ways of righteousness. Och du ska lära många rättfärdighetens vägar. And the truth that will set them free. Och sanningen som ska sätta dem fri. For your hands will be used to bring deliverance. För henne dina ska bli bringa ut frielse. The enemy knows your name. Fienden vet namnet ditt. Because you have authority for my kingdom's sake. För du har autoritet för mitt rikets skyld. The enemy shakes and quivers when he knows you're coming. Fienden skälver och frykter när han vet att du kommer. For even like those four lepers when they went outside uh, of the gates of Samaria. För akkurat som de spedalske fire spedalske gick ut av leiren. The host of heaven walked with them. Så var det himmelens herre had herreføreren var med dem. And the enemy felt a fear in his heart and began to flee. Och fine kände en frykt i hjärtat och du blinte och flykte. I will fight for you because I love to fight with you says the Lord. Jag ska kämpa för dig för jag älskar att kämpa med dig. Now Father I just loose that anointing of deliverance upon you. Jag bara löser det salvelsen av utfrielse. Now, now in every way in every form we call it. Nu måter. In Jesus name. I Jesu namn. Come on give the Lord Amen. a hand clap of praise. Amen and my sister here that's Faithfully getting the word for her, hallelujah, on that on the phone. We'll let you get you organized here, because I know you want to get it recorded. Hallelujah. Right. What? Tell me your name, so I have it for the tape. Brit Kahn. Okay. In English, or you want to translate? It? Translate. All right. Oh, all right. We'll, we'll give you a new word. <laughs> All right, you're going to get it on the tape. Okay. Father, I thank you for this woman of God. And the Lord says, daughter, I have given you the hand uh, of a, uh, one that would be a, a vine dresser, says the Lord. That would know how to go into the vineyard and begin to prune and to begin to work with the fruit. Jag så går in i vingården och driver och renser vingården och druna och grenarna. And I have required things of you that you felt like I didn't require of other people. Jag har krävt att ting av dig som jag inte har krävt av andra människor. It's not because I'm hard on you, but because I know what's inside of you. Det är inte för att jag vill vara tuff mot dig, men jag vet vad som är på insidan din. And you've taken up responsibilities that other people kind of let uh, fall by the wayside. Du har tagit upp ansvar som andra bara låtit ligga. But the Lord says, daughter, I've given you a strength, and I'm doubling it even now. But you're going to know how to bring the sweetness of the fruit to the fore. And many will taste and see that I am good because of how you operate. Og mange vil se det og smake og vite at jeg er god. And even the fruit of the kingdom is going to begin to be increased in this hour. Og kongerikets frukt vil øke i denne tiden. Because I'm increasing the level of prayer in this land, says the Lord. For jeg øker denne graden av bønn i dette landet, sier Herren. For the call is going out, and men and women are answering the call. For kall går ut, og menn og kvinner de svarer på det kallet. And the Lord says, daughter, you're going to be one that connects and interconnects people that know how to pray. Og Gud skal vise deg hvordan du skal forbinde mennesker som skal be. And you're going to be a great encourager even to ones that have to lead and take great responsibility. Og du skal oppmuntre den som skal forlate og ta opp nytt ansvar. But you're also going to be one that knows how to work uh, the harvest and even prune what needs to be pruned. Men du, Gud skal vise deg hvordan, hvordan du skal jobbe med åkeren og rense det som skal renses. And it's a key discernment and words of knowledge you're going to have. Mm. Så du ska ha en en nyckel till och så skälna. And timely words are going to come forth out of your mouth. Och det och ord i tid ska komma ut av munnen i en riktig och riktig tid. My daughter, don't be discouraged. Så min datter inte var missmodig. You did some things you felt like that didn't work. Det är ting som du följt inte virket. But the Lord says you didn't know all the fruit that was born. Men du visste inte om den frukten som kommer att bli fött. And then you prepared the way for others to be able to receive things that you didn't even ever know about. Så du har jo forberedt veien for det som ikke du visste noe om, og som ville da gi, gav, eh, gi frukt for de som kommer bak. And I see a very unique ministry that as you pray, og jeg ser en unik tjeneste du har, at når du ber, things are happening in other parts of the world even, that you may not know about now at all. Så skjer ting på andre siden av verden som ikke du vet om en gang. 
I'm reminded of a story about a missionary on the front lines that was in a desperate state. Jag blir minnet om en historia om en missionär som som var liksom i frontlinjen på något ett et allvarligt tidspunkt. They were in Africa and and a tribe had captured them and it looked like they were going to be killed. Det var det blev tatt av en stamme i Afrika och de skulle bli döpt. And then in a moment all of a sudden through a, a I won't tell the whole story but through a inspiration they got delivered. Men på grund av en inspiration så blev de utfridd. But it wasn't until years later that they were home and talking to an intercessor. Men det var inte för år senare att de kom tillbaka och snakkat med en som var i förbön. And the intercessor said, "Yeah, in the middle of the night, I woke up and I prayed for these hours." Och då var det en som hade gjort av förbön och så blev som fortalt det att jag blev vaken upp och blev bett om att be. I didn't really know what I was praying about, but I knew there was a burden I couldn't let go of. Jag visste inte vad jag bad för, men det var en börd jag inte kunde bli kvitt. Jag måste bara be. And when they compared the time, it was the exact same time. Och när de sammanlänkte det tidspunktet så var det akkurat på den samma tiden. The Lord says, "Your labors are not in vain." In the Lord says the Lord. Så Herren säger att ditt arbete är inte förgäves. Now I just lose a double portion for her now. Jag löser en dubbel portion över henne nu. En dubbel portion. A double portion. Dubbel portion. Of energy. Av energi. Of life. Av liv. Of health. Av hälsa. Of strength. Av styrka. In Jesus name. I Jesu namn. Even of clarity and accuracy of the word. Och en klarhet och en 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 Just lift up both your hands right now. Father, the double portion is hers. Double portion is now, hennes. now, no. now, in Jesus' yes, name. Give no. the Lord a hand clap of praise. Clap Hallelujah. We'll turn to somebody and say, are you going to let go of your past? Say, it's time. It's time to cross over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Det var en fantastisk applikation för att kunna gå vidare. Mycket visdom, mycket fantastiskt fint som passar samman med det vi har fått. Nu tar vi en paus på. Jag tror vi ska ta ett kvarter och så är det bättre att vi verkligen får få frisket oss lite grann. Så då gör vi det för Jane har nästa session. Du vet klocka är bara vägledande det är inte sant så om vi går över så gör vi det. Så men 15 minuter har vi nå. Profetisk TV producerar stort sett alla programmer i vårt eget studio i Övre Eiker. Vi fokuserar på både profetiska betjänande och undervisande programmer. Vi inviterar gärna gäster ifrån in och utland, människor som har ett profetiskt budskap för idag.